6.30. We will call the order of the April 29th meeting of the Rollins for Select Board. First order of business this evening. Chief Dushar. Have uh, someone who'd like to be an officer. Yes. We'd like to have an officer. Yep. And I want to be one percent of the Okay. Chair, sell a please. All right, Jared. <laughs> you think I'm joking? All right, well, first of all, thank you very much. And if you would raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. I, Jared Malatek. I, Jared Malatek. Do you solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially? I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully and impartially, and impartially discharge, discharge and perform, and perform all duties incumbent, all duties incumbent on me, upon me as a police officer, as a police officer, and will comply, and will comply with the Constitution of the United States of America, with the Constitution of the United States of America, the Constitution, the Constitution and laws of the state of New Hampshire, and laws of the state of New Hampshire. The laws and ordinances of the town of Rollinsford. The laws and the ordinances of the town of Rollinsford. The rules and regulations of the Rollinsford Police Department. The rules and the regulations of the Rollinsford Police Department. And the law enforcement code of ethics. And the law enforcement code of ethics. And that I will discharge. That I will discharge the duties of my office. The duties of my office as a Rollinsford police officer. As a Rollinsford police officer, to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. All right, we're going to have the Knowles present a couple of lectures. Congratulations and welcome Thanks to the board. Thank you very much. Can I just have you hold the bench? Yeah. Okay. You can all have a picture if you want. Can we go? Can you all, can you all ask the select board members? Right. Sure. Yeah. 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 Then. Very good. Okay. Congratulations. All right. Thank you. Do you want to have, say anything? You don't have to, but if you... This could be your one chance. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just appreciate Chief giving me the opportunity to be able to work for the town. Um, I just really appreciate it. I'm excited to start my career in law enforcement. Glad to have you. Good luck. Thank you. Congratulations. Sure Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Sure. All right. Next thing we have on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for April 22nd. Folks have a chance to review them. Yes. Yeah. 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 Any additions, subtractions, edits? Yeah. Yeah. Corrections? Objections. All right, so without objection, we will approve by consensus. Next order of business is the uh, community input. We have some attendance here. If you want to just come on up, you can come up. And anyone else for a community input? We have one, and you can do it right after. If you want to come up, this is, uh, that means you can address us. Yeah, hi. My name is Peggy McClendon. I've been wrong, sir. And uh, I'm going through a very stressful time right now. I'm trying to evict my tenants who uh -huh. are not paying me rent. Uh -huh. And what they did was they came to talk to Caroline, assuming that she could probably help them get on welfare or whatever. I don't know why. But um, she called me, first of all, and informed me that I didn't give them enough time for eviction. I left them the um, demand for rent or quit. Right. And then I left the eviction notice. Well, I did do it probably because I have a lawyer. And then what happened was, is I guess my tenant decided to talk to Caroline again. And Caroline told her, do not pay me rent. Save your money and give it to your next landlord so that you have the money to get another apartment. And I called Caroline and I asked her if this was true, what she said. And she said, yes, she did say it. And I don't feel that that's correct to do. I mean, I'm a taxpayer. I have tenants that aren't paying me rent. It's very stressful to me. And why didn't you assist right. okay. them in okay. helping okay. me we're out? Gonna, we're going to just stop for a second. We need to address us, not, yeah. not our staff. But if we're... If we're if you're going to go any further talking about this case, we're going to go into a non-public session to talk about it. Um, if not, I mean, we can tell you that the well, policy of the town is that there are a finite number of dollars, tax dollars, that go to pay welfare. Um, this is something we would have told any tenant that if they are in the process of being evicted, there's only so much we can do to help them, and that... We would do vouchers if the landlord was willing to accept vouchers. Um, if um, if the landlord wasn't, then yes, we would tell them that they should save their money to be moving towards a new apartment. If they're in an apartment that they can't afford, 
we it's not it, it's not in the town's best interest to keep them in a place that they can't afford because the taxpayers are on the hook paying it. Well, I'm a taxpayer, and it's not my best interest either to have tenants that aren't paying my rent. I understand. And getting that, a lawyer. We, uh, and having no rent. I mean, I'm going through a hardship with this too. That I understand. And I just don't feel like what she said was proper. You don't tell someone to okay. steal from Peter to pay Paul. Oh, okay. So, Mary, do you want to keep okay. talking with us? We'll go into non public session to deal with the welfare case. But we're sure. not going to talk for the specifics of, of, the, of, the, of the individual petitioner's case. I don't know anything about the welfare case. I'm just upset from what Caroline said to not pay me. You know, and I don't I want to make a motion to go on. I'll make a motion to go on. Get us out of here. A uh, welfare complaint. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yes. Okay, my guess we're not public session. Wait. Before we get to the end of the meeting, I'm going to ask you to go on. I think I would much rather have been here. So anyway, okay, so it is quarter to six. I think I watched the few minutes ago, so we got 12 minutes. I'm going to go through, uh, do more uh, input. Do we have any other community, other community input? You're right, sorry. Anyone else? You're all here from Eversource, right? All I, the, I am not. You are not? Yeah, I'm here for the unmerger. The what now? The unmerger. Uh, it's in your folder. What? Why don't we do that in your um, in your loose folder. folder? Blue folder? Oh, no, it's... Red folder. Sorry, Miles has it. Um, right there, it's that. Oh, lot merger. I thought that's the, what you the said, but... Um, I've got my allergies so bad I can't hear very well right now, so I apologize. I didn't hear it correctly. They were voluntarily... No, clearly you said it, I just... They are two You were involuntarily uh, merged, merged right? Lots. You want to be separated again. Yes. All right. So it's been through um, right. review. Yep. They were in fact involuntarily merged. So I wonder why the law does that, but I didn't know. Yeah, there's you know, there's no other form to look at it if you want to look at it. Okay, so is there any objection to so basically your lot on how roads some of the how roads how roads rather were uh, because of Zoning laws that and changes were involuntarily merged back yeah, quite a while ago. Like, yeah, as, the 70s. Now that you actually asked for it, but it happened in the 1970s, right? Yeah, so quite you a while. would like that to come apart. And the process is you have to come to the select board and ask for that, right? So it's been reviewed by both the tax collector, the building code enforcement officer, and who else? Someone up to chat, take a look at those two, maybe. It's been reviewed. It's been reviewed. By several people. So, is there any objection to no. um, And it's been prepared by your attorney, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bruton. So, if there's no objection. We'll sign mm -hmm. it and let you nice folks have your, uh, your lots back. All right. I have um, an email address of somebody I've been corresponding with um, from Attorney Bruton's office about this. I can scan this back over tomorrow. That'd be great. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. I want to keep in the full Thank you. 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 I'm Carl Lee, and I'm with Energy Main Consultants. Let me sit or stand, is it not? Whatever you're more comfortable with. This is uh, Kristen. She's with Eversource. Okay. Um, so I'm a preferred vendor. I work for preferred vendor uh, in, the, in the small business program that maybe uh, Kristen can kind of explain okay. our relationship before I get started. And you're here tonight to explain to us the, uh, different programs that are available to us to retrofit to more energy efficient uh, light. Right? Yeah, we, we have audited the buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've given uh, George, George brought us in, um, and so now we've presented that to him. I think you guys may have some of that information in front of you. Uh, I thought uh, Kristen could maybe kind of explain who EMC is and how that relates to Eversource first. Okay. Okay. So Eversource runs uh, several programs to help buildings become more efficient, and that's part of the NH Saves program and is run through the um, Public Utilities Commission. Okay. And we have four vendors throughout the state that are our preferred vendors that um, implement our direct install program. And what that is is that 
Uh, we have auditors like Carl come out, who goes through, does a lighting inventory, um, works very closely with us on developing a scope. We review and improve that scope. And then um, we work with Carl to implement the projects once it's agreed upon. And then Eversource pays Carl 50% of the total project cost, and then Carl bills the town the remaining 50%. So it's a cash flow, uh, it's a little bit different cash flow um, that's better for most municipalities than um, our other, some of our other programs that require you to wait for a rebate after so the project is completely installed. So it's 50% via Eversource, mm -hmm. and then 50% via, so what's the name of your company again, Carl? Energy Management. Cool. Yes. And Carl's been working on this with us for many years. He's um, one of our top performing vendors, and uh, we have a very close relationship with him, and we monitor the progress of projects with him very closely. So okay. it's um, he implements a turnkey program, so it's start to finish. Uh, Carl and his firm are in charge, and because he's one of our trusted vendors under direct contract with Eversource, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of monitoring and reporting back to us. Okay. All right. And so the way my end worked is I, I did the audit look for, looking at uh, the town building, uh, George's building, mm -hmm. um, looked at the well, fire, fire station mm -hmm. um, and the transfer station along the highway garage. We looked at those buildings, again, focusing primarily on lighting and any opportunity for controls, uh, okay. all LED. Um, and we again, we take that, that audit, which is a free audit as part of my contract with our source and, mm -hmm. and presented that to you guys. So. Um, again, they all qualify under that small business program uh, based on how it's been screened. The way the, the program works is if you decide to move forward at that point, you would enter into that customer agreement to set that rebate money aside uh, from every source. Then you'd have a TNC with EMC just to agree to pay that other 50%. Uh, once we had that contract, then we would project manage our own subcontractors and their local guys, someone like Mr. Electric in, in town here, Dennis Burke. I, uh, do a lot with those guys, and, and uh, so it's, it's local stuff, but we manage everything. We drop storage containers, we take care of uh, receiving material, uh, we oversee the contractor, we give you timelines so you have a real start to finish to how long these projects are going to take based on uh, material availability. We take care of all the recycling, the hazardous, non-hazardous disposal, single stream recycling, uh, everything, and we send out weekly updates uh, to you guys to give you those progress reports. Ever sources in every communication from start to finish. Uh, hopefully, it's a smooth project, and at the end, uh, Crystal would come out and do a post inspection with you guys to make sure that you're happy, the counts match, the technology matches to the end of their software, and at that point, that rebate would come to us, and then the balance of your your contract. Uh, so it's all encompassing. Obviously, there's no permits really associated with them, no permit fees associated with the town building, but there are permits, and we give you the insurance certificates. It's uh, it's like I said, it's turnkey. So, what was the estimated cost? Um, I don't remember. Yep. So we have um, we have all the buildings here uh, broken out, and it's broken out by meter. Uh, that's how it, how it works out. Okay. So if we uh, let's say if we look at the fire station, um, so we're looking at a project uh, total project cost of seven thousand seven hundred and thirty seven dollars. So Eversource would pick up fifty percent of that cost, three thousand eight hundred sixty eight dollars and fifty cents. So your out of pocket would be that matching thirty eight sixty eight fifty. We're projecting based on the hours of operation um, and the savings based on the new measures, uh, 1589 uh, in energy savings per year. Um, so kind of divide that by 12, just over $100 a, a month okay. uh, towards that. So in energy savings, it's a two-year payback. So uh, when we fa we also factor in maintenance savings, which basically is the cost to buy new fluorescent lamps and dispose. Obviously, they all have mercury phosphorus. We have to recycle them, so that's all. Uh, maintenance savings is built into there as well. It doesn't really look at labor because in a lot of cases the town does it in-house and there's really no extra fee. So uh, 38 68 50 out of pocket on that one. Uh, the town hall uh, is a uh, total project cost of $16,762. Uh, Eversource would contribute $8,381. Your matching would be that $8,381. And we're projecting on this building an energy savings based on your blended rate right off the utility bills of uh, 33, 17, 29. So it's a substantial savings on this building here. And that's just over a two-year payback, 2.13 years. And that's the whole building? Correct. All yeah, right. inside, outside. Yeah. Uh, transfer station, uh, small project is uh, 1953. Uh, out of pocket is uh, ever so three bait, 97650. Your out of pocket is at 97650. 
uh, with an energy savings of 435.86. So a two-year payback on that. Which these are really good paybacks for for going to LED. Two years really good. Uh, the highway garage. Uh, so we have a total project cost there of 9,160. Uh, average source rebate of 4,580. So your matching contribution will be that 4,580. Uh, we're anticipating approximately 1800, 1802 uh, in energy savings per year with another 85 in maintenance savings. So uh, that's a 2.43 year payback. So all the buildings combined would be 35612 uh, with a 17806 incentive and a 17806 uh, town contribution uh, with the average payback of 2.17 years. So again, total total savings, energy savings for all buildings is seven thousand one forty five sixty nine. So uh, substantial savings for all buildings. Okay. And one of the, the things that uh, the benefit of that reduced savings is your is the environmental impact. So we we generate this document, and what it's based on is that thirty seven thousand uh, four hundred twelve kilowatt hour save for all the buildings. So a nice thing to promote to the community is that not only are you saving energy, but these are some of the green benefits. So less oil imports, less uh, carbon dioxide emissions, sulfur dioxide, all um, a direct benefit of reducing your carbon footprint. So um, and the, uh, certainly every source is happy to provide a, uh, a plaque, uh, usually something that they'll do for towns. So you can kind of you know, put, in the, put in the town hall or something like that to promote that. And the Eversource has a lot of opportunities to um, work with the community and educate or, you know, we can have someone here answering questions or, and then we even are, can um, help you develop a, a case study if you want to do some PR, talk to, you know, local newspapers, um, we're here to help with those types of things. Okay. So, the way this was pitched to us. Road agent was that um, um, there would be no upfront cost to the town; that it would be the cost would be recouped via um, um, higher electric rates. Well, we would pay the we would pay the same rate that we were paying before. We wouldn't be we wouldn't be um, enjoying those um, those lower energy rates and then the cost savings until the, the cost of the project was paid off. That program. Not something to qualify for, or no, it is. Um, okay. You can do that. Okay. And what you can do is you can um, what it's called the Smart Start program. Okay. And it's on bill financing. Okay. So you use the savings that you've received uh, through the upgraded lights mm -hmm. to pay off a loan um, to whatever source that you've taken to pay that seventeen thousand uh, balance. So okay. What we would do is we would. Um, Eversource would go into contract with you, mm -hmm. you would agree to pay that certain amount each month on your bill, mm -hmm. and then uh, we make we screen it to make sure that, that your savings is going to pay for it, right. but with, with right. payback right. like that, it's, right. it's um, always usually works out. Okay. And then um, you would agree to a certain term, and then during that term, on your monthly bill, you would see the Smart Start payment. Okay. But the idea behind that is that the savings from having the upgraded lighting would be making that payment for you. So your right. bills would stay the same, right. most likely, and, um, and then after the term of the loan, you would see that savings again in your bill. There is so. a, uh, to maybe speak to the rebate, there is a reduction in the rebate. Okay. Okay. There is a one-time administrator fee, is that yes. the best way to? 5%. Uh, okay. So 5% of your rebate, you, you, you know, down with roughly a 45% rebate to fund okay. that loan, yeah. and at that point, it's a 0% interest loan. Yes. But if there okay. is, um, to get it to 0%, there's a little bit of a buy down in the uh, rebate offer. Right. And that's the 5%? Mm -hmm. Or an additional? It's an additional one. Okay. It ends up, I think it's close to 10%. Yep. It's, it's close where to 10%. Yep. Uh, so you end up with about a 40% rebate at the end of the it. But again, there's a couple payment terms there where you're still staying cash neutral. Uh, for that zero percent interest loan, and it's you're not cutting a check; it just goes right on your bill, and just see that smart start line on there. So okay. for um, the the um, transfer station project, it would be probably better for the town if you had that seven hundred dollars to just right. pay for that one outright. Then you wouldn't right. lose any of the uh, rebate or be charged an administrative fee for something for a project that small. So right. we can work with you to see if you have. Um, okay. You know, 
cash, it depends on the size of the project and how much cash you could outlay, but we could right. help you balance out which ones that would be best for and which ones okay. you wouldn't want to lose that and right. rebate for. The only other piece in terms of the smart start is unlike the, the, the rebate, which is available now until that money runs out, which yeah. the budget's gone up, that money is pretty much there all year. The smart start money is typically you sign that agreement and you sometimes you just get in line and wait for that money because every account from the smallest, the transfer station to someone like the Manchester Wastewater Treatment Plant pulls from that same pool of funds. So gotcha. you know, a good example, I did the schools in Hampstead. We signed on in January. They had to wait until I think it was uh, August before the funds were available and we just installed it over the summer so it worked out. But sometimes you have to wait. But until you sign that agreement to get in line, that money is not gotcha. uh, budgeted for you. Okay. Right, and then once you do sign those agreements, you get in line for the financing, and then the rebate money is immediately set aside for you. So there's no chance that once you got to um, the project that the rebate money would not be available. We okay. immediately reserve it for these projects. Good to know. Any other questions? What is typically your installation time frame once you do start? Uh, I, you know, it would depend on the scope of the building and how many lights and, and so forth. But is this, you know, would you estimate this to be a six-month project or a three-week project? No, or, no. So, you know? so typically once we have the contracts, we're in here doing a pre-construction meeting within a week to ten days. Um, and at that point, once we've done that pre-construction meeting, we've sorted out all the different, you know, length, color temperature, things like that. Um, then we're going to, materials typically four to five weeks. And as soon as that material arrives, uh, we're installing a building like this is, is probably less than a week and it's the bigger of the building. So something like the fire station is a couple days, the transfer station is a day. So it's very quick uh, and it's one after the other. Uh, and again, especially if we take that smart start, we're not seeing any of that money until the project's 100% complete and you've signed off. So it's on us to get this job done uh, quickly and efficiently so that uh, we get paid. So, uh, but yeah, typically material is, you know, it's build as you go, it's four to six weeks depending on the, on the component but we're installing as soon as it is in here. And I would say the entire, all the buildings together is at most a two-week installation. It's very quick. So what about like <clears throat> trimming out like a room like this? Would you put in a fixture that filled up a square? Or yeah, so in the case of this room here, and again, I, uh, there's a lot of different. So the highway garage has new LED high bay fixtures with a control, with an occupancy sensor. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, a room like this gets a new volumetric kit where it basically is a new fixture. Uh, it's it's a Lithonia product that you take the lens out, the lamps, the ballast, everything comes out, and it's not a tube that goes in. It's an LED board okay. built into a fixture, but it's a kit that basically simulates, it's the same thing as a new fixture without having to get above the ceiling and untie mm -hmm. it and all that. So. It's a mix. There are some, some new fixtures, there's some kits, there are some LED tubes and ballast where I've got some really low run hours, um, you know, but there's there's a good mix of that. So the, the fire station has some LED tubes and ballast and some exterior floodlights that are new. Uh, anything exterior is pretty much all new fixtures. Uh, and occupancy sensors where it makes sense, like the highway garage for sure, where there's a big building with only one or two guys there at any one time, we can kind of control those lights through occupancy. We can dim those lights too. So. Yeah, and we're at like you know these bathrooms here don't have occupancy sensors now, so we're right. using occupancy sensors there, uh, so that takes care of that as well. Yeah. Can you dim the ones that you will put in this room? So I don't think we've got a lot of dimming. Again, the restrictions we have is um, the run hours and the and the um, the existing technologies. We've got a lot of TAs uh, in there, so I know the highway garage has that dimming function where after a period of time it will dim them down and then shut off based on occupancy. Uh, these are straight volumetric kits in here, so it's just a it's a, a so 22 watt two by four kit. We have two switches. I think to her point, we have a screen here. Yeah, I didn't Is there a way to make a half and half room? If it doesn't dim, can we, you know, do something to make it darker? For yeah, so we could kind of either do a checkerboard system where it's like every other light, or maybe you take the, short of being able to give you that dimming piece because it just I don't think it would pass cost benefit with every source. Uh, we might take, you know, maybe just do a little rewire within the fixtures, and maybe take those two lights and have them be one of those switches mm -hmm. and have the back group do oh, that. That's very common. Oh, that would be better. Because you know, back yeah, when this building was right built, now. we didn't have the smart boards, you know, yeah. so we, that's, that's a problem in schools too. So, yeah. yeah, we can work with you on that. Again, I don't have a lot of uh, uh, dimming on some, there's a wireless technology, but again, it's just with the hours and what I have for technology, it just, it, it, it wouldn't screen properly. Uh, but we do have a lot of occupancy sensors throughout. And, um, you know, the wattage fixtures that we pick, to, to your point, is, is correct to what's here. So, you know, in the case of these lights, we've got a lot of lamps that are burned out or it's shut off. So you might say, well, it's a little bit brighter while well, you've been dealing with lamps that have been, you know, burned out for a while. So 
Uh, but it's very efficient. Again, you're taking a fixture like this, it's 112 watts, and you're going down to 22 watts, so it's a, it's a quarter of the power. Yeah. But uh, if we could take two and put on another switch, and that yeah. would that would solve the yeah. problem. Yeah, and that would all yeah. get sorted out with that pre-construction meeting where I'm working with everybody within okay. each building, the fire chief, mm -hmm. police chief, all that kind of thing, and just kind of make sure that we've answered any questions for them and work with them. Mm -hmm. um, what we try not to do is go back to you for any additional charges. If I miss something on my survey, that's, that's on me, so. Uh, I don't do that, but I do try to explain, and I, I spent a lot of time with George um, about what we did in each building. So, actually, we looked at these buildings several years ago, and at the time, it, it didn't move forward. A lot of what I was proposing was fluorescent. Well, now the resource has done away with all those fluorescent incentives, so it is everything's LED now at this point. And the um, reasoning behind not being able to increase the cost too much is that Eversource, we have to report back to the state um, the cost effectiveness of all the projects, so mm -hmm. we can't have the project cost still up too high if the savings isn't increasing uh, at the same rate. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where that comes from. And as much as I would love to you know, sell new fixtures everywhere, it just doesn't, there, we have a lot of criteria that really kind of reins us in based on that payback. Um, so, uh, but there's, there's a mix of technology there. Yeah, the fire station is all new LED tubes and a new, uh, a new ballast and all the exterior of the fire station is all all new fixtures, so uh, that's very, very typical of a lot of these buildings. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, have, I have one more question. Yeah, sure. um, so, this is a two year, two, two to two and a half year turnaround. Um, and, and not that I anticipate that anything would happen within that time frame, but um, should the board want to, is there a way to buy out like the remainder of, of the loan? Like, if we were to start with doing this through bills, could they switch and halfway through that just pay off whatever the balance is yeah. and get to the new lower right. price so rate? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 We, I, yeah. We've done in the past where I, in my town of Nottingham, we, they did a smart start and they paid it off. I think they, they, they talked about it, that they could pay it off early and that's, that's been a discussion. There's no penalty to pay it off early. Right. No penalty. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good to know also. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Good. No, well, this is a lot to chew over and a lot of good information. So thank you for that. Thank you for doing the, the uh, audit. Do you have any questions for us? So. Nope. You have the, I don't know if you have the updated proposal. I sent it to George today, but certainly he could share that with you uh, that has that cost savings. And, okay. Um, you could look at that. And certainly, like I said, is there any more questions in terms of the technology that we're specifying? Mm -hmm. um, so let us know. Awesome. Great. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Visitation. We're coming to see you in a couple of weeks. Yes. On the 14th? Yes. It's a Tuesday. Oh, it's a Tuesday. It's Tuesday, right, because that's their normal training night. Okay. Correct. Sure. That's all that I have for the board. Anything from me? I think, we, I think we've uh, it's it's talked all. about just about everything we probably could. All right. Thank so. you. Have a great night. Have a good night. George, come on down. Thank you. You, um... Stir over.
Oh, Ron Harry is right. Was it you? No. No, it wasn't you. <laughs> I'm just giving him a hard time. We're going to talk about that at the end. But why don't you go ahead with your stuff you have for us first? And we'll go through them. It causes stir. It causes yes, stir. Yes, you did. But it's okay. Uh, I'm going to pee off a thousand dollars for hot talk for various projects that we've been doing. Uh, rocks. All right. I'll move purchase order one six three zero to Brox Industries for a thousand dollars for hot tub. Second. Seconded, moved and seconded. So the the plant to reopen, we can actually get the good hot top now and yes. we don't have to worry about the coal packed garbage. Good. All right. Purchase order sixteen thirty has been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Pike Industries for gravel for thousand dollars. Is this in sorry? Move that. I make a motion to um, move purchase order 1631 for Pike Industry, Industries, crushed gravel for various projects for $1,000. Hold on a second, George. Okay. Hold on a second. Is there a second? Uh, second. Okay, now we can go ahead. Ask your My question was is this that was part of the quote, or is this something beyond the quote? No, that's out of the way. That's to fix two storm drains and stuff that we had to fix down there. Oh, okay. Collapse okay. And stuff. Just, I just needed the gravel on the No, I didn't know if it was the same. All right. <coughs> additional coming out of the gravel, sand and gravel line. Any other discussion? Right. First story 1631 for moving second. That all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. 
Um, where else have we had complaints recently? Silver, so there's a lot of incidences, but I don't know where you'd put it. I know. Yeah, exactly. Long road. That's, and people on um, Heritage were complaining too, we saw, right? I don't know where you put it there either. It's a well, long road. put it road, at the beginning so. of the road. I mean, they. The problem is that no one walks their dog down there. No, you know what I mean? So they might see it driving in, I guess. Right, but. yeah, that would be, I mean, there is an audience. I mean, right. The advantage in the village is that people walk by and they mm -hmm. see it. And they may ignore it, but at least they see it. And they... What about bicycle and five? Ah, yes. I think we need to focus on the stormwater <coughs> area. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Not that heritage is, a, is important. But no, 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 no. Well, trust me, we're dealing with them in a moment. The rax is a grind. Um, I think you're right. Bicentennial Park mm -hmm. for the stormwater implications. Yep. Third Street, Fourth Street. Yeah, I'll check um, the downtown area. Mm -hmm. The Legion. Down by the Legion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. I mean, people who walk their uh, yeah, they, walk they, their dogs on Boundary Street for sure. Stay away well, from the gazebo area because yeah, the teacher taking out. all the time there. You know. But it's right along the river, and so but that maybe, has bigger yeah. stormwater implications. Yeah, maybe down by the river more so than yeah, uh, where the gazebo maybe. is. By the, uh, yeah, by that, um, the boat launch there, maybe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause that's ours there, right? Then the other part is the uh, Legion's mm -hmm. block. Mm -hmm. right. I don't think people want their wedding photos. Well, I was just saying it's... With the dog poop yeah. sign in the background. Yeah. Maybe they're going to Can't imagine. So we have six to do, so we'll find, we'll find a place to get yeah. I mean, I think that would be the, 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 the biggest trouble spots, where there's stormwater implications. You know, runoff implications. So the village streets and the bicentennial park and the double region. That would probably be almost all of them, right? <coughs> I think. No. Okay. We have to learn what they can make them so. Yeah. Right, right, right. And they weren't all that, um, comparatively speaking, they're all over buying that expensive. Right? So, Alrighty. Um, we're late already, so you might. Late for oh, I didn't open the bids. Oh, yeah. The people chopping at the bid. Um, okay, do you mind, George? It has to do with you, so we'll open it. You're right, thank you for all the mind. We had one bid come in. Oh, was that guy really angry? Was that guy? Was that guy? I don't know who it's from, but my dad said you his name, but I don't know the person. Hopefully, it's the same person that wanted to buy it before. Embarrassed by the snafu, but hopefully it's the same person. And it's, anyways, anyway, we have one bit. Sorry, and it is uh, from uh, Mr. We said the name right, the amount uh, what we usually do in our numbers. Yes. Mr. Matthew Plaza, and the amount of twenty-two thousand five hundred dollars. And that was the minute. minute. Is that the is that the from before? Well, okay. well at yes. least that person didn't run away. Good. So well, at least someone wants to buy it. So that was the minimum bid that we said was twenty two mm -hmm. five, and that's what we were hoping to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Was um, well, I'm sure we were hoping to get more, but that's what we anticipated, mm -hmm. and we talked about for the budget, right? So it was twenty thousand. So what are uh, yeah, mix it twenty to twenty two thousand. So there you go. what are uh, we'll what's the pleasure of the board? Okay, the motion has been moved and seconded to accept the bid of Mr. Matthew Plaza and the amount of twenty-two thousand five hundred dollars for the um, two thousand eight GMC C six five hundred truck. All of those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Does that come with a and everything? Comes yeah, they don't pay for this. So, we thank Mr. Plaza for his input. Oh, I need to write on it. P L A Z A. Now, could you kind of have him um, bank check or cash? Let him know. Thank you. I don't know. Bank check would yeah. be better than a big yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Just for safety reasons. All right. Anything else, George, before we go into our list? Nope. Oh, go ahead. All right. So we have driveway culverts is the first thing on the list. Because, you know, why not? 
Yes. Why are you looking at and why am I looking at you? So, uh, probably to remind me why. Wait, tell me. So we received advice from. Oh, this is a, so. Is this about the culvert on? It's about the old mill, or is this about, about in general? And it's also about Sligo, and Sligo. I would hope it's a general comment about okay. how do we respond to. Um, we have another request for one also. I'm sure we probably have. So <laughs> no, it's, it's it, it was brought up last year when we were working on heritage. It's Tom from. Uh, and he's willing to pay whatever it takes. Yeah. So, um, the municipal association uh, reminded us that it is the homeowner, property owner's responsibility to maintain the driveway culvert, that is, an easement granted by the municipality so they can access their driveways. And advised us further yes. not, not to, to engage in a business of installing them for people. So, pretty simple. That seems pretty clear to me, but of course it's not that clear because it has been done. It has been done at least in one instance across the street from one of the people that is asking to do it. Um, I understand that towns, the board can't tie the neck board hand. I understand that. But well, Tom is he'd like to have it done before we pay the road, which makes sense. Mm. The prior board also, when making that decision, also didn't have this advice at the time, mm -hmm. for whatever that's worth. I don't know, I didn't get involved, I didn't read emails, if there was anything, so. Um, so I think I was left off them, so, for the better. But, um, yeah. So the information and the advice we have now, currently, from the municipal associations that we should not be engaging in this business. I did relay that to... And we relayed this to information to folks that... Have we sent it to both parties? I have only it's related to... Someone on Old Mill and other someone on Heritage. I, so. I did not relate it to Heritage. I only related to Old Mill Lane. We should probably send it to that individual as well. That there is new... I would... I mean, I, the way I would say it, because, I, I, again, I wasn't involved in the last one, that there is new guidance, I would say, from the Municipal Association, because there, I can't imagine that the prior select board didn't ask the Municipal Association. I would be shocked, considering who the chair was. Um, she was always asking them about things, so I have to imagine she probably asked. They could have been a different lawyer, different opinion, I don't know. But I, I honestly don't know because I wasn't part of it. I, I'm at a loss. In that, so. I have more than enough stuff to do. And you do have more than enough stuff. Fair enough, George. <laughs> We get that, but we, we just have to deal with the, the, the other fallout. You don't have to worry about that. Um, okay, so is that the will of the board that we pass the information on that we are? I think we aren't would be foolish not to accept advice. Mm -hmm. I tell us from the don't don't disagree. Change. That's what we pay our groups for. That's why they get they got their water groups. So, uh, so we're in agreement that. Yes. Yep. Okay. So that part is taken care of. So you don't have to worry about that. DES permit on Sligo Road Culvert. So, Aaron, um, a, chance. a chance, thank you. Just look down the street. Um, has offered um, had to come in and discuss this with us from Oil Tanner, that are our consulting engineers, to assist with the permitting process. I would suggest it might be in our best interest to take him up on his offer to come in and talk to us about it. A permit will be required right. for Sligo. Okay. We can pave in the meantime. But in order to ensure the ongoing integrity of the road, um, it, it's not going to be, it's not going to remain at full width if we don't shore up the bank. Right. And I need a permit to do that. And because of the proximity to the river, the historical nature of the house That's that abuts it, there's um, a permit. The good news is Aaron did relate to us that um, DES uh, uh, has revised, well, the legislature actually revised. But DES is implementing revisions to the permitting process, uh, so I guess it's not as um, stringent as it was before. So that's a, you know, it's sort of a double-edged sword. Maybe good and maybe bad. But um, so he'll come and explain that process to so us. I'll so I'll next week. Yeah, I think that'll be good. But at least in the meantime, we can get to work on the paving part. So that's a plus. If and folks are in agreement with that. that too, yes, right? absolutely. All, All right. right. Come next week. You should hear what oh, yeah. Aaron has to oh, yeah. Okay. We're also sure to want to be on Monday night. Yeah, yeah. right. Eight thirty now. Uh, Bicentennial Park flagpoles. It's my understanding that they're in disrepair, and there are other concerns now that were brought up about 
who's going to maintain the putting the flag up and down and all that. Mm -hmm. And so the board wanted a better understanding of costs before proceeding to see if, you know, since there are ongoing implications, um, does the repair cost warrant the whole thing? I haven't got a price on the piping yet because I was now the veterans or somebody else got involved here and I just want to, you know, see what they want to do. What are we going to do down there if we're going to do anything? So that part is news to me. What's the, that, that is, is the Legion involved now? Who sent me that email? I don't know who sent you an email. I didn't get an email about... <laughs> we didn't get an email. You got it. Did I don't know. Did someone, the veterans or something, was questioning something about it? No. Uh, I don't know. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the veterans are going to be the ones that are going to not us anyways, but um, I will tell you that the historical committee has been... Is it the historical statement? Uh, oh, that, that, that. I'm so, so the historical sorry. committee yes. wants to, as a, one of its service programs, to now, in, 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 in getting volunteer labor from residents, work on um, refurbishing the park, uh, the, the um, gazebos and their disrepair, and there's some fallen ground fans and pillars that need to be fixed, and the, the, fence, the chain on the... Yeah, there's, there's things that need to be fixed. Right. Right. So, but that shouldn't matter whether or not we yeah. fix the flagpoles or not. I mean, that's the flagpoles are not only going to be fixed, but they're going to be moved back because they're too close to the power lines for one thing. Yeah, before, we, we, before we reinstall flagpoles, it's probably be a good idea to move them back. Uh -huh. Right. What's involved in that? Like, it's, no, it's, no, it's just in a big rock, so we can actually oh, move okay. the rocks the back. And actually, we're thinking of making them so they we can mount them so they can be taken down to paint and put back up, you know, to make right. change the brackets and say, right now they are installed in a rock. Right. And they can't be bent to paint it. So, you know, my little wind broke them off. Because all they are is two pieces of pipe that were screwed together. Okay. And, uh, you know, black iron pipe, but we can, we have the capability of welding this stuff together, so. So it's really just a cost of, of the pipe the materials, which is basically, I would imagine, minimal. Can't have a, yeah, a, a couple of lengths of pipe to put up a flag for them. Mm -hmm. The greater right. question Again, is who's going to maintain if, if the building. If there's not going to be lit, right. it's, it's going to come, come down, down every night. Right, exactly. <laughs> so we got, you know. Is there a light down there now? I don't, no, know. I don't, I don't think, think so. Night, so. Yeah. That's pretty light now. Is there not a light in the gazebo? There's no way near the flags. Yeah. No, I understand. There, was, there is one, but I don't think it's working. It's been. It's quick. Vandalized, let's just put it that way. Where are the flagpoles? I'm sorry, I thought Almost they were the boat launch over there. Oh, way down way there. Way in the back, yeah. Why? Personally, I would think they should be in front. I thought it used to be. I thought it was by the gazebo, too. I, I mean, Why would we have it all the way down there? two flagpoles there that are in disrepair right by the landing. All right. Hmm. Oh, okay. And I there's a monument, a rock. These were donated by somebody, okay. apparently. Yeah, Okay, and what kind of a monument's down there? It's just a rock with a plaque on it. That's dedicated to the Bicentennial Park. I don't know what it says. Why would they put a flagpole by the yes. boat launch? I mean, I, if anything, I, I, I thought it was by the gazebo. That's why I was... So that so the back part is Millennium, um, um, Bicentennial Park, right? Is the front a different name? The gazebo is? I didn't think so. I didn't think so. I thought it was the same thing. Um, I don't know. You know what we're going to do? We're going to ask the historical committee to talk to uh, Mark Kuchar and Ed Charpentier because they are two of the living folks that I know of that were involved with um, a lot of the work down there. Mm -hmm. Other folks are no longer with us. I can't ask them. So, um, Is there anything else down there other than the flagpole and the little there's stone? There's a bench down in that area. Too. Oh, there's a bench down there too? So I there were bench, really there was a number of benches down there one time, and they were vandalized, and they were moved upstairs. And when we cleaned out the top of the town hall, two, three, four, how many years ago now it's been? So they lose track after a while. Three. Three. They were moved, a few of them were moved back down there. Mm. So mm -hmm. that's where they are now. And I don't know what they look like, because I don't go down there yet. I used to walk my dog down there, but it turned into a, a cesspool of dog feces everywhere. People don't pick up after their dogs, but um, so I, don't, I never I stopped going down there. But um, like I said, the historical committee wants to help bring the park back. Out to, I don't want to 
won't say it's former glory, but it, you know, it was really clean it up and fix it up. So um, I know they were hoping maybe if you had time, George, you and Ed could just take a look at the gazebo, and if you had a, an opinion on things that needed to be done to it, um, point them out. If you have time, if you don't, then we will certainly have someone else ask someone else. But um, you guys have uh, fabricated so many things and <laughs> constructed so many things that we know you have the skills. So we're not asking you to do it. Just um, maybe just take a look and say, well, you know, this maybe it's beyond repair, and that you just you get rid of it and raise some money and buy a new one. I don't know. Okay, I mean, I'm not hoping that's not the case, but yeah. So if you have time. So that's Bicentennial Park. So maybe you find out how much it costs for the flagpoles, and if we can move them, they're just they're just the big boulders, right? Yeah, we can. We yeah. Just big so boulders. we can move with the back though. Just, I mean, can't be moved. And if it makes sense to move to the front of the park, or actually we just take them out of the rock and just build two two stands out front, and you know, actually put two new flagpoles up front. We can move the monument up front with it if that's what they want to do. No, it's, it can't be moved from the rock or right. the plaque on. And what we do have to keep in mind that someone's going to have, it's not like someone's going to say, yeah, it names, down every night. There are names on both flagpoles to the donated by, so. So they're, they're um, so they're going to, right. you can repair that to save them, you know, I mean, they didn't fix, donate them once, I don't know. Right, what exactly. What you want to do with that, so. There's a number, that's the other thing that, that this work committee is going to look into, is a number of small little grass plaques on benches and trees and things that were donated. And seeing if we can get them fixed or replaced. But people took time to honor their families, so it would be nice if we could uh, fix them. So this will be money that we can ask for the town. I don't think we're going to ask the town for any money. I can't imagine. But anyways, so that's Bicentennial Park. So we want to hold and see how much it costs for pipe this and this. Okay, so let's table that then. Sale of the GMC, we just did that, so yay. My favorite one of the night. Response to Heritage Drive and Moses car. So apparently, someone on the street uh, sent an email to select residents uh, to yesterday or today. I don't recall. We weren't part of the select few, but to complain and raise the alarm that uh, was not going to be repaved um, properly. Properly. properly to this person's what they assume is the correct standards, I guess. That's the nicest way I can put it. Um, you have had four separate conversations, five, five separate conversations with five different firms about whether or not it does truly need to be fully reclaimed all the way down, or can it just have the, the overlay in, in, in the remainder. You did the reconstruction of the road that was and at its worst. And over that worst section, the second mm -hmm. layer. So, the looking at the bang for your buck is what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. And as the five o'clock I just said, everybody would like to have their road reclaimed. Yeah. That road is not a highly traffic road. If, the, right. if we were doing Main Street, Boundary Street, and then you want to reclaim them. Them roads got a significant, a sufficient base. They're not breaking up like the section that was bad, right. or the sections that were bad on Woodrun. They said, more bang for your buck. You're going to get 10 to 15 years out of repaving it, and you know you don't have a highly trafficked area. You don't have truck traffic other than for delivery slippers. Right. And they said. I wouldn't spend the money on reclaiming the road and pay well, you know, Sherman Overlay is going to buy you a lot of time. You have other roads that need significant working time. All right. And okay. you want to be looking at your project. So, All right. so yeah. we have a response to them, to the nice people that reached out to us today. Uh, dear, you know, whoever sent us the, the emails and calls and whatnot, uh, thank you for taking, and I've done a few edits, so thank you for taking the time to reach out to the select board regarding regarding the town's plan for paving on Heritage Drive and Moses Car Road. Um, we value your input, your time and input. We received a number of comments from concerned residents who live in that area. In 2018, the plan was to reclaim the entire development. During the reclamation, during reclamation, 
inappropriate fill was found in one area and in another area has suffered a water problem. This led to a significant increase in the cost. At the same time, cost overruns in Woods Run and River Road developments were discovered. The select board had to take action so that the two projects together would not be over budget. Subsequent to that, the road agent consulted with four, now five. Okay, uh, five. The uh, wanted it to be uh, rock overlay, which I didn't even bring up to people. All right. Uh, just to uh, instead of reclaiming it, you could have dish then a uh, I can't remember the name of it. Chip. 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 Yeah. Chip. Yeah. And that, they were one. Another one I suggested. You know, that road isn't worth spending the reclaiming on it when you can fix it. Right. So subsequent to that, the road agent consulted with five paving companies all of which confirm that reclaiming the remaining parts of the road is not necessary. The remaining parts of the road are structurally sound. The paving plan this year includes an overlay of that entire development. There will be there will not be any patching. The overlay is one complete coat, because that was the rumor that was going around that we were just going to be cutting out and patching certain areas. But this is the person, the rumor the person has started, because that person didn't understand the process. The cost to overlay Heritage Road, or should we drive? Heritage Drive and Moses Car Road this year is $120,000. It would be more than twice as expensive to reclaim the remaining areas than to add overlay. The select board is charged with managing the town's funds to the best benefit of the, it should be the entire town. We learned during the 2018 paving season that roads were improperly constructed, but also that the remaining areas do not require rebuilding. We try to adjust plans as we learn the best, as we learn to best meet the needs of the town with with finite tax dollars. It is, diff it is difficult to justify the significant increase in cost to reclaim the remaining parts of the development when there is no evidence of the need. By early summer, the development will have a smooth new coat. We hope that this explanation will alleviate your concerns. The select board always strives to do its best to put the tax dollars to best use. Please don't hesitate to reach out to the board with any additional questions or concerns. We hope you have a wonderful summer. Sincerely, me apparently. For the board. What do folks think of the letter? I've added some edits, but you can, if you have more edits, please. There were a number of um, factually ink. Well, the one thing, that, I don't know if you've all had a chance to see your email. I did. They were all coming from the same place, they were all given the same information, and they were all very similar. Yep. And um, so before before rumor festers into fact, I thought it might be nice to send them all the same email back so they understand that, no, this is not the case. We're not going to be cutting and patching just certain areas of the road. We're actually covering, the, there will be a cover, and it will be look like new, but we do not need to rebuild the entire road. There's no point in doing it at this point. Folks, okay with sending this to mm -hmm. them? An yep. email tomorrow? Yep. yep. Okay. Can you make the edits and I'll. I can do that. I was also going to suggest that we um, take it out of letter form and put it as a public information. Put it on the website? In the website. Just as, you know, I send, have Tia send it out as well? So we don't get 10 or 20 more. Well, we don't know who else might have received right. an email like the that. Entire, I can just tell you that the, entire, the, the entirety of both streets did not receive it. There's just enough people on the street. People, they probably thought would Well, I'm trying to say that there's one family that I know of that didn't receive the email on the street. But other people I know did. Yeah. Like the person who lives across the street from me that I was looking out at the street and it's paved in front of that person's house. So I'm not sure what their concern was. Because they live in the part that was all done last year when, when you all did party did so anyways so I think it's where there's some confusion now. whether it's intentional or not there's some confusion so. can I take the revision oh yeah you might want to take that before I walk off of it yes thank you <laughs> okay anything else for George this you evening you'll send me a copy yes yeah that's a good idea too no nope. no nope, no no copy for yourself. Right. no no more for George you asked the whole oh, question oh, oh, oh sorry you're all you're working for George I think I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Anything actually, else for you, uh, We are sweeping Thursday. Oh, good, okay. And that should be on the website, and PD is on the website. Website without address. 
Perfect. Okay. So. All right. Anything else for doing? Really just push. We're going to do main street also. Just get it Take care. Take care. Okay. So. All righty. Thank you, George. How okay. are you? We're here so late. Um, just quickly, the school is weather permitting, going to be painting fish on Thursdays. On Thursday. They won't be right. painting fish on Thursday. It's going to be raining. Yeah, well, so, rain so, so we, you know, they don't have a contingency plan. So there shouldn't be a dust problem when we sweep. Uh, yeah. No, there's a... <laughs> so, oh, yeah, but you know, we'll go over the problem. fishes and get rid of them if they're still wet. And yeah, it would come out. The paint out. won't dry anyway. So you have to be careful. We're going to be there before they are. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're going to be there. I wasn't worried about that part. Because you guys... So, do the kids do it? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a group. Going I'm not going to this year. Not that day, anyways. Yeah. Maybe next week. It doesn't week. look good, but that's their plan, so... No, what day has look good? Yeah, today. Today. Yeah, today would have been perfect warmer. But, till... No. So, that's on the agenda for Thursday. So, they stuck in the forest, so we... Very good. Thanks, George. Thank you. Thanks, George. Have a good right. night. We have welfare. I'm going to suggest we do it at the end of so we don't have to throw people out. I did have to come back in. We have $2,000 in the uh, sweeping budget, so we might as well use it, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't realize the boys, when I asked when, people, when I wrote the PO, it was a 15. Oh, okay. But that sweeping budget was raised to $2,000, according to paper oh. magnets received on the quarterly. So, I can grab the PO if you want to ask for a revision. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just double check. What are we getting? What were you hoping for? Are you doing 1500 and you, they yeah. just did as much as they could do for 1500 exactly. Okay, so you're saying if okay. you have 500 more, you might get a few more streets. Yeah, that's what we budgeted, and that's what we, we need to do. I just want to make sure that's in fact what we really thought we did. Yeah. Street sweeping 2000. Yeah. So. And that's what we were hoping to do. We want to be able to accomplish that what we can. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want it to come back. That's going to cost us more. It no. won't come back. All right, so we'll revise. Our motion to revise purchase order number 1607 to from $1,500 to $2,000. Not to exceed $2,000. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. Janice is going to move um, that. Oh, we're going to second. second. Uh, we'll second that. Okay. Is there any discussion? So, how many you were hoping to get? How many more roads? No, you, he just goes as long as his hours take, depending how long it takes to sweep. So we go as far as we can go. Okay. So this will add. Okay. And he's pretty good. So. Okay. Okay. So, but we had budgeted for two thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. And I didn't see that until after people made out. My bad. Oh, it's something easy, and this will be the easiest thing we can fix tonight, George. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right. All right. Well, thank you, George. Have a great night. So we're, we're tabling welfare until the end of the meeting. Town administration, fire department salaries. So we have um, resolved police salaries, finally. Fire department salaries.
speak that. No, I don't want to. I'd like to be able to give the fire department the raises that the fire chief asked for when he came to us and the select board had agreed to. And the uh, budget committee wanted to reallocate uh, and not honor that request fully. So I would suggest that we have uh, 5,000 we could move from a different line, that we should uh, move it back to. Um, salaries for the fire department so that we will honor the fire chief's request and we will get the fire department, the on-call firefighters up to at least minimum wage. I'd be more comfortable knowing where it's coming from. It's going to come from uh, insurance, I'm assuming. It can come from health insurance. It can okay. come from reasonable time salaries. Okay. Because we've already honored what Bob has asked for to his budget request. Get through, through the went through the budget committee, so we have that flexibility. Makes sense. So both the police and the fire department can be made whole as far as their future concerned. I'm uncomfortable about making the motion oh, okay. because I'm going to make the motion. Denise is going to say she's going to recuse herself. But only on the motion. I will vote for it, but I shouldn't make the motion because I've been accused. You stand accused? No, I just people have issues. And I don't care, but I'm not going to make a motion. But I will vote on it. Well, I've made the motion, so I'll okay, so have a second to raise the salary line for the fire department to 51000 You've got it. Yep. So the motion on the table is removed and seconded is to reallocate. Uh, money within the budget so that the, both the fire department salaries, which is line 142, shall read 51000 instead of 46000 Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. Also, also, also to adjust the, 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 um, oh, the, the taxes. taxes yeah. The taxes. So then we will need to readjust from on the payroll taxes. Which is forty four fifty nine. Mm -hmm. So it's the difference between the thirty seven hundred sixty six dollars. Seven sixty six. Seven hundred and sixty six dollar difference. Yeah. Okay. So it's a five thousand seven hundred sixty six dollar overall change. Impact. Overall impact. Any other discussion? No. Saying none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So that's taken care of. Fire department dollars are currently reserved. CIP committee, it's my understanding that the budget committee and the planning board are still waiting to meet so they can appoint uh, their members? Correct. For the budget committee anyway. Yes. The planning appoint anyone yet? So we will table it then because there's no update to give besides that. Newsletter content. So chairs of committees and department heads have all been forewarned that uh, May 1st is the deadline, right? Yes. May 1st, the deadline for content? Yes. So does the board want, does the board feel strongly about any particular topic? Do you have any thoughts about what you would all like to see in the newsletter? I would like to have a content draft to you. Just the stuff for stormwater that we discussed. Um, mm -hmm. I have that. Okay. Perfect. Do you have anything you want to see? Do you have everything you need besides no, that? No, I don't have everything I need, and I really have an opinion about this. About what? About the content from the select board. I think you need to tell people what your well, goals we're, we're, are interested right. in. So we're going to talk about the paving? Yes. I can, I can come up with things and draft them. You know, I can come up with right. a statement, and that's fine. So I just want to make sure the important that piece is, is, is paving. Right. Um, Stormwater and what was the third thing I was going to suggest? No, I can't think of what it was. Well, the good thing is I know your phone number. And I'll call you tomorrow if I can think of it. There's, there was a third thing. And I don't it's okay. You can all think about it and get back to me within the next day or two. So, so we have until the first, which is Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, until um, Wednesday. And Salmi and I are meeting about it, so we can work okay. on a draft and have a case in the meantime. All right. The department heads of all. It's going through the, the tax, tax bill. The tax bill, yes. yeah. Uh, as the department heads um, submitted things that they wanted. 
going on? Salme takes submissions, and we are low on <coughs> input. Okay. Um, Andrea submitted some good information reminding people the results of votes that um, we're no longer doing resident tax, but also right. we are getting people who find the inventory report on their own and submit it, even though this is our like, well, second so or third should, year that we're not We should doing remind that. folks we're not so, doing that anymore. Right. So we can have some basic reminders like that. We can wow. recap the um, March election, you yeah, know, members. generally. And, Talk about where we're at with the past. All right, so we'll take a look at the draft and then we can we'll add from there. How's that? Very good. All right, is that okay with that? Yep. Denise, you okay with that? Yep. All right. Space Needs Committee draft charge. Where is that? It's in one of the folders here. Can I see it? I have it if you don't. Oh, I'm sure it's here. That, this is not the latest iteration. It's a, it's a, um, so I apologize for that, and, um, but it gives you a general idea of um, the scope and magnitude of evaluating um, the needs of the department for staff based on number of incidents. Um, our police department, not outside of the context of our community, and right. um, and also available space. There, there's a lot. It's it's very heavy, and I'm I'm concerned as a committee that it's a lot of. Um, right. They don't have a lot of information to work with, and and yet and, and so it's a heavy um, lift for volunteers. For sure. So. And I have not yet heard back from the school about. Um, right. whether or not we're going to be able to utilize some expertise. So, have we done a, um, we've done an assessment on, on, um, sort of the physical space of this building, right? But we haven't done an assessment of, of sort of the, the needs right. of, of the police department itself, right? We haven't done an assessment of, do we have enough officers? Do we have too many officers? Do we have too many cars? Do we have too few cars? I mean, there's, do we need a, I don't know, 10,000 square foot, I don't know if that number makes sense, facility, or 5,000 square foot? We haven't actually done that. We should sort of know. Um, there's no outside information. Okay, so we have, don't even have that information. So that might be a place to start also. I mean, I, all of this information is really important on here, but it's also going to be May 1st on Wednesday. Um, and I think we owe it to the police department to make sure it gets done right um, because it's where they're going to have to work and, you know, and it's where the taxpayers are going to have to pay for it. So this might be in our best interest to think about, I don't even know what it would cost. We'd have to find out how much, it, if it's even possible, maybe getting a consultant to um, to um, to look at those needs, to do an assessment of the, of the police department. I mean, I'm not maybe not being all that articulate this evening. I apologize. It's late now, but is that something that would even actually, maybe not start here? Is that something that even interests the other board members? Look, getting gathering that in, sort of type of information in the context of I think of, that makes of, perfect sense. of space needs. That we ought to do with a comprehensive. Assessment of the need, and okay. not a building because that's one piece of. It might be more, right? Yeah. Right. So I know when um, when the committee met the very first time around, we had um, there was a suggestion. Oh, well, can we rent space in a, in a remember in another department? Mm -hmm. So we had a member look at that. That wasn't feasible. Right. But we could answer that question. Right. Did it, was it was there interest from the county or the state police to um, to cover for us? And we did some investigation that um, I don't know if it's all that thorough, but we did. There was some work that was done on that, mm -hmm. and there didn't seem to be 
any cost advantage mm -hmm. from what we, I mean, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. right? What else? I mean, then there was, um, well, can we just ask Dover or Summersworth or Nobody said the county to patrol for us, right? Nobody was interested. In no one was interested in that, especially Summers. Um, as I recall, I mean, nobody wanted us in their building. Yeah, no one wanted us in their building on top yeah. of that, right? So I mean, so we could answer those questions, mm -hmm. right? But there are other questions that remain unanswered in my mind. Like, are we meeting the needs of the residents? Are we? We are a town that hasn't grown in decades. New houses have been built, but people, you know, passed away, and the population has not shifted dramatically, or and it has not shrank dramatically either. So it's been very, very uh, stagnant for, for several decades. So there's that. Do they take that into consideration? I don't know. They had all these different things that I don't know the answers to. So mm -hmm. that if you, again, though, if you're going to be going forward with another potentially large multi-million dollar project. This is, might be another piece uh, of the puzzle that hasn't been answered yet that potentially could uh, put concerns aside for folks. That yes, indeed, we really do truly need to be building a new facility, or no, you should be fine. It's sufficient what you have now, I imagine, but it could be. So, and those aren't things that we can necessarily answer 100% right now. So, I think, at the very least, if you could look into Okay, with the rest of the board look into I think what it's it would cause. Idea because um, I have to say it's a it's a good it's a good charge, but to the level of you know information that I think for to have to stand behind a, a recommendation, um, yeah. it would be really difficult I think for a committee of volunteers to find the data to support whatever they might recommend and come up with some kind of comprehensive singular recommendation that you might be able to put on a ballot for next year, if that was the goal. Just, you, know, you took to the brunt of all this last time around to me, so I, I don't mind trying to put you on the spot, but I'm just looking towards you because you had, you had to sort of bear the slings and arrows of all the folks that were either for or against, so. I mean, I think that, I think um, there, are, there are opportunities where you can evaluate are we staff-wise based on our size of, you know, equipment and all of that? And maybe we need, and, and facility. So I think that maybe we should be looking at um, getting an outside person to come in and, and evaluate that. Who has no personal right. vested interest right. in having it be anything but what is actual factual. Um, and there's, there's groups that do that. We should think about there that. Are, there are companies to do that. Yeah, so we should think about doing that. I'm not saying that, you know, that the space needs isn't going to stay active. We should get back into this as well. But, but this could inform but the this conversation, this would be right? something that they, we should have done first to bring it to that committee for... Yeah, because if, if, if what they're proposing isn't sufficient, or maybe it's too much. I mean, you really want... To me, you want to have that information. I mean... Are there, I mean, Bob had talked a little bit about, I mean, this was a couple of years ago at this point now, but there are standards that are required for police departments, mm -hmm. but are there standards based on population, or is it just, this is what the, the standard is? So, mm -hmm. I, I, I have to imagine it has to be on population, because the, the city of Manchester has a much larger police facility than what would be recommended for the town of Rawls, or even what we were looking at this That's last time. Dover and Summersworth. And Dover and Summersworth, and pick whatever, Nottingham, mm -hmm. right? There's going to be different based on, I, I'm guessing, on population. Are we meeting it? Are we exceeding it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. And to me, that would make sense that we'd want to know that information. Yeah. It's, it's well, that is an interesting point. You know, if you're going to, if it, if it is, um, what would be the correct size to build? If that is the recommendation, if that mm -hmm. looks like what needs to happen, mm -hmm. how do you determine what is the, you know, because you're right, I think there, there are standards, but... You know, we're asking a lot of for us as they would be Manchester. This 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 charge is wonderful and it's very comprehensive, but it's a it's a lot to take in. You know what I mean? For for asking volunteers to gather a lot of this information, if if some of it could be provided for them, I think it would have lessen the burden and they could come up with a good decision. 
on what should be done for the, for the police department and the taxpayers. So we can look into cost. I can see who's out there and what they do. And uh, it may be crazy. The way to just pie in the sky a number of them is like, well, too bad. We'll have to figure out how to do this on our own. I don't know. But I think we should at least find out what's out there and the cost of it and see what we can do. Okay. It's one of the things that I think is important and um, helpful about um, an outside evaluation if you choose to do with that is that it, um, it helps to remove politics and feelings and it becomes more data-based because it's an outside person um, making a decision based on numbers. So it would really help the board um, with whatever recommendation presents itself through that process if you go that way. Um, it, it's easier to stand behind something that um, was brought about um, in a thoroughly objective manner. Mm -hmm. Especially if they can use some data. Okay. So that hopefully we can get, you know, full community support with whatever the end goal is. Mm -hmm. That would be nice. Yeah. Probably impossible, impossible dream, but it would be nice. Optimism. Well, look, as long as we can get a super majority to support, because whatever it's going to cost is going to be, it's going to be a bond involved, I'm assuming, so. Yeah. If you want, uh, we, we need to, clearly something needs to be done. So, if we're going to do it, I, I want, yeah, exactly. So, um, you can project. find out some yes. information for us for next week, that would be super helpful. Okay, so every source proposal we just heard this evening, I'd like to table it and think about it some yes. more. I want to read the email that they sent to, was it George? Is that what he said? Maybe forward it to us. I don't know. I didn't read it tonight. Um, so. No, we don't have it yet. <laughs> so i like to see the proposal and write it before, right? I mean, it, it, it has potential, but I, I don't know if it's feasible so, or practical. I mean, especially considering the, um, so I'm not going to discuss it. Right? There, there are unknowns, let's just say that. For, for instance, we're sitting in an unknown, so I mean, that's something to consider. So we'll talk about it next week. Unless folks want to talk about it some more now. No. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Perfect. <laughs> so appointments. All right. So we need to appoint a tree warden, a fence viewer, and parks and rec. I know if we appoint John Hensman as tree warden. I'll second that. Okay. So. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so Ed Charpentier is the current tree warden, I think, right? I think so. Did he write back? Do we... He, write back he did not respond to public outreach. I have not reached out to him specifically about whether or not he desires to keep the position. And I, I asked because Ed actually does the, the duties of the tree warden, so he's been maintaining a number of trees in town, and um, especially down around in the park. So is it, it is a check. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So I. I like John. I don't, I don't I just like well, him or think that interest. he wouldn't. Right, right, right. That he wouldn't do a fine job. It's just I, I'm just shocked that Ed didn't say anything. But anyways, but if there is desire to appoint Mr. Hensman, we can do that. Um, did we have a cutoff date when we put it out? We did a couple. It was weeks last ago. Friday. Or last Friday. Friday. Yeah, the nineteenth. So. I can't imagine that Ed would stop doing the work he's been doing, but because I think he likes doing it. But and I mean, if, if, if you feel like someone wants to reach out to him specifically, I will. I'll send him an email and ask him. But I mean, of course, I rescind my motion. Well, no, well, hold on. We don't, we don't have to. I'm just saying he did actually respond in a timely manner, and we had a deadline, so. I mean, we have deadlines for reasons. If you don't have anyone respond, that's one thing. Or if you think the person's unqualified, that's another thing. But I think John is certainly qualified to, 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 to do this. It's just, um, it's just a shame that he didn't respond, I guess. So. Well, let's just give him one more week, and if he doesn't respond, we we'll reaching out. Okay. They won't vote on it next week. Okay, I'll do that then. All right, so fence viewer, anyone, did anyone want to be the fence viewer? There are no applicants. 
Okay, well, we're not going to be able to appoint the current person because he's no longer with us. Um, or more than one way to skin a cat, you could appoint. How, how do you think John Henson would like to be the fence viewer? Or rather, rather, I mean, I wonder if Ed Charpentier wants to be the fence viewer and, and Henson can be the tree warden. You can you can talk to Ed about that All right. in your outreach and, All right. and see if also he knows somebody who might be interested All right. in fence viewer if he's not. Okay, and rec parks and rec. Did we get any names for that one? I got three. Perfect. Kelly Anderson, Dean Hawk, and Lori Hess. No. Yes. Yes. Hess. Hess. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you no mo move we nominate those three people? I did. They they said they would they would do Second. It. Okay, so at least for this one we can figure out. Okay, so the deal is that the folks that are, are the sort of the parks and recreation folks are um, sort of overseers or like the sort of the physical plant and make recommendations back to the select board as to uh, what needs to be fixed or prepared or expanded or mm -hmm. whatever. So, or, let them know that when we point them in a moment. Okay. All those in favor of Dean Newtog, Kelly Anderson, and Lori Hess, you said? Yes. Okay. Say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Well, then we've appointed those three people. We thank them for their service. All right. Employee recognition dinner. Uh, the Legion space is not going to work. The school has said that they are, they are open to us doing it. We're looking at the possibility of their kitchen space, um, and that means we can use it, or if we need to have one of their staff people there, right? Now what the so said. we can use the kitchen. It's just about whether or not they also have to have somebody, you know, a kitchen staff person there. That was always the rule before. Before, sure. yeah, oh, and that makes so, sense. Yeah. So, and so that might be a cost item, and so right. we don't have the answer to that yet. But the space is available free of charge. Should you want it? Okay, well, let's take, see if we can figure out, or the school can figure yes. out the, that other piece. If not, there's still the, the fire station. Which so, what if, okay, maybe we'll just wait and hear from the school. Um, because, are you cooking something, or you're bringing it in? I mean, if you don't, if you're not cooking something, you don't need the school cafeteria. I mean, the Very school uh, cooking. Luck. The potluck as much sense as anything else. So then we might not have to Instead of having spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah. I, I, didn't know what I mean, I know that it's, it's supposed to be employee appreciation, but we can still appreciate them. Mm -hmm. We can bring a dish. Yeah. My opinion. I, don't, I didn't know. What were you thinking? Well, we, oh, have, we haven't made a decision yet. There are no decisions. Yeah. Decision, you know, it's, so. it's all starting from scratch, so yeah. it's whatever you all want to see. I wish I knew what the headcount was. Yeah, and when, when we said um, employees and families, you mean employees and spouse, and that, right? Not children and all of, I mean, we don't want to make this humongous, right? Well, we all look at Matt and like, I'm I, wrong. I, no, no, I, I agree with you too. <laughs> well, I, I just think between Leafs Fire, Highway, and us, that's, that's a lot of people. So, I mean, you have 20 employees at the fire station plus spouses. What do we have downstairs? And transfer station 15, too. Yeah. And then transfer station. I mean, you start putting kids in there, and then you're gonna. It's gonna be. And then you get this office, this building. You know. So we want to make sure that we don't overdo it. I guess. I mean, I was thinking yeah, just no, playing right. spouse. So but, you know, if if all the employees good. showed up, um, you, you could end up with sixty people potentially. Yeah. So you know, you could. <coughs> budget for space for maybe 120. Mm -hmm. That would be large if everybody brought a plus one. Right. <coughs> and everybody, and everybody, and everybody came, came and they brought a plus one. Right. So, <coughs> so I, I just want to make sure we were clear what we were yeah. really going to put out there for. Yeah. It's not family, it's just, you know, a spouse, I would think is enough at this point. That's my opinion. Yeah, no, I think That's you're my probably opinion. right. I wasn't thinking of the, yeah, that many people, but you're right, there is that many people. If they all come. If they all come, yeah. I mean, but when you don't well, plan for it, they're all going to come. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know. Well, let's wait to hear back from the school to see if there would be, what if, if there's going to be a charge. I mean, I think the potluck idea is probably going to be the way we would 
and proceed this year, but it would have been nice to have I mean, just get any balls. But anyways, we we can talk about it some more next week. But yeah. after we get some more information, plenty of time. Um, gas expansion in Rollinsford. So Unitil would like to expand its line into Rollinsford further than it already has. And they're asking for a letter of support from the select board to the Public Utilities Commission, right? Mm -hmm. Now, normally you would say, yeah. why not? What's the downside? But there are several communities that have said, no thank you. And that, that might, do I understand that correctly? That um, there are some towns that are saying, no, we don't want you expanding our town. I don't know I'd who like they to know are, why. But, but I have to think there are. So I'm not sure how many there are. He, he attached um, two example letters of support. Yes. Right. From but I thought I saw really somewhere that. By. So, you know, right. maybe it's worth asking some of the people in the area because, you know, that's two letters of support, not from Stratford County. Right. So, how do the people, well, right, like how do the people in Stratford County feel about this? Were they right. approached? If they declined it, why did they decline it? We don't really know. Right. Um, further, I think. Did you tell the company that blew up like half of Lawrence and North Andover? And no. No. no, they no. had their own. But, I mean, that was a different I mean, number. Okay. Well, technology no, theoretically is the same. Um, oh, no, it's, it's not, it's not the same company. Though, right? no, no, it's not. No. No. So, so the other thing I would going say, going if, if you um, get to the point where you want to make that recommendation, maybe see if the Highway Safety Committee would have a meeting and evaluate it. It's going to go along the highway for sure. I'm assuming it's going to go down. Well, they deal with all matters of public safety. Right. Yeah. I thought that's what the map said, but maybe not. It, it goes down a, a short ways of, I mean, it's really long the Dover line. It comes up Route 4 a little ways, but yeah. not much. Yes. Yeah. The map was not clear at all. Yeah. So that's the other thing, is that it's not really clear to what extent. Are they going to go all the way down Route 4 Maine, or where do they right. really, or are they trying to get into the neighborhoods and serve every home over what period of time? Right. That part's not clear. So he's willing to come talk to you if okay. you want to hear him. Sure, why not? I mean, if folks want to hear it. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I, I think it's a benefit for the town. Um, but I've and I don't mean to yeah. say that it's not. Yeah. I just no, I think we should, again, get as much information as we can. Because when I originally saw it, I said, well, why wouldn't we? But then I started thinking about it some more. Like, why are, not, why are they not submitting any letters of support from surrounding towns? Mm -hmm. it's just well, the surrounding towns so. might already have. Well, they may already have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dover already has it. Dover, Sonsworth has it. Somerset already has it. Right. So um, maybe that's why? I don't know. But if you, can, if you invite him, you can ask him. Yeah. No questions. Yeah. If you want him to come, let's have him come. If he's okay. available next week, have him come on over. Okay. Okay. So this was a recommendation of the building inspector if you yeah. would consider. Um, currently, the idea of building permit expiration dates is already addressed in state building code. Um, and what it says is that when you get an approved building permit, you as long as you start the project within six months of issue and continue working on the project without lapsing for more than six months, it doesn't expire. He would find that easier to administrate than um, monitoring um, these other deadlines that are imposed in-house and then having people go through a process to extend the building permit if they're not finished. Because so yeah, he knows what date they were issued. Right. And it's... Yes. And he knows which ones are outstanding right. and that are, that are ongoing. Um, Makes sense. And, and it's not dissimilar to the planning process that, you know, you get <coughs> approval and as long as you're working on it, essentially, you get to keep your... It's already in the building code, so... It is, it is a... So you can supersede that with your own rule, as we right. do, but um, it, he well, would... Well, it's arbitrary, so right now... It is rather arbitrary. We have any for tonight, I show you. It'll say, it's up to the board, we write in, you know, six months, a year, I mean, so it's a moving date, I mean, or well, there's that, yeah. Or just at the beginning of the year, sometimes we just write, oh, we'll give them until the end of uh, the year, or it's like electrical, oh, we only need six months, or it's periods. There's no fast and... Right, and building a house wouldn't be the same as building a deck, you know. Right. So, that kind of makes but sense. But also, you have to make sure that, like when I did my three projects, 
I did do them all at the same time. So one, you know, and then three months later the other one, and then three months later the other one. So you probably have to ask the person who's doing the application what their intent is, too, if it's more than one project. You know, so then yes. you can make sure that there's an update uh, range on there. For the most part, people do not apply for a building permit because they don't want to incur the fee unless they intend to start the project within six months. Okay. So, so they don't get a permit at all? Because <laughs> they don't want to incur the fee. That's <laughs> nice too. Yeah. So. You know, it doesn't have to be decided tonight. Um, Something to think about. You can streamline the process and actually hold people better accountable. And, and, and give more leeway to folks actually that are doing the work and, and, and making it, consistent effort. It allows, it, it's a better be use of his it. time. To yeah, it might be worth it, so. Something to think about. All right, so we'll hold that for next week then. Yeah. Hiring panel. So you had sent us, Carolina, an email outlining the process by which you would like to hire the um, uh, bookkeeper. Yes. Good to me, and I'm happy to... to Serve on if that's what you want. But yep. As in, like, is there any um, miles to? Yep. Happy to. Okay. So, if there are um, enough applicants to interview, my thought was to get them all the interviews done in not more than two half days. Perfect. So, I can work with you each separately on maybe each doing a half day or up to a half day. Yep. Sure. Yeah. That would be fabulous, thank you. And then we can make a recommendation to the full board? Yes. Is it done? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay, do okay. All right. Policy review. I suggest that we table the welfare review. Personnel. Purchases. Unless there's any objection. Okay. <laughs> Still Monday at least. Um, <laughs> town administration standing items, thank goodness. Board member activities. So I am assuming recreation is an update for you today. Yes, I have an update on recreation. Um, I have, um, I need to, have, we would like to have an offer letter done uh, for the assistant director, which I have the recreation. <laughs> um, so it has to come from. Um, yeah. This office, so I'm, okay. I'm assuming that with it, Caroline will do an offer letter, and then how many people has to sign in? I only, I think you just need a vote before that you'll hire the person. Right, and then we can do the offer. Okay, yeah. okay. So. Um, and once we vote on it, one of us will just sign it. Yeah. Okay. I'll come in um, and sign it. So the offer letter would be based on what the salary is and the budget. So, um, but there is an. Um, I can't say. I don't even know. What how to pronounce her last name, but it is for the uh, assistant director's position. I thought it was going to be an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to offer the position of assistant director to Samantha Mestieri. That sounds pretty good. Mestieri, Mestieri, well, I don't know. What's spelling? M E S T. <laughs> I E R I. Yeah. Mestieri. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Mestieri. Mestieri. Whatever. So. Mm -hmm. Call it Italian. Uh, that much I think you are right on. For sure. All right. Is that your motion? I'll make the motion. Sure. All right, I'll stop. Mm -hmm. I think Denise was actually good. I'm just filling in a name. She has a pretty impressive uh, resume and work experience dealing with. Uh, Kids. Yep. She has her, her bachelor's of science from the University of New Hampshire in recreation management and policy. Pretty cool. And a minor in psychology, so she'll be able to deal with all the little devils. <laughs> I said that as a loving father of one of them. Um, yeah, pretty cool, actually. A lot of great experience. I'm going to take a look at it. So, I'll let Miles take a look at it for a second, and we'll call the question. Yeah. Does she want to be a bookkeeper too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, nope, she wants to work at Summer Record and go back to her full time job. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. All those in favor of hiring Samantha Mestieri as the assistant director of. Oh, sending an offer letter. Well, is that the same? Is that the same? Yes, the same. Okay. Right. Doing right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Awesome. I will give this to you so you can, I can have the address and everything. Um, uh, Kelly is um, getting the state passes uh, organized. We're going to be, Great. I believe we're going to be doing state, uh, 10 state passes that we had done last year. Um, let's see. We have two returning staff or counselors at this at this point in time. Okay. Um, uh, um, Dee had a concern of when she's replying um, to email. Uh, she doesn't have a re email that she can use to reply back with, she, and she's using her personal one. Is, is there any way that she can have an email that she can use as a rec department? Is there a recreation so, one? There is one for recreation. It's been okay. rec directors in the past. Okay. So she can certainly use it for now until you have a rec director, okay. or you can, you know, use it and share it among okay. the co-directors and yourself. And okay. you know, it, you know, we can change the name on it. Um, or just recreation department or something maybe. Well, you yeah. have the recreation committee. Yeah. Um, but you might want one for just. You know, a separate one that's not necessarily inclusive of everybody that maybe belongs to. That's what uh, the rec director has, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. But the thing about that is, it belongs to one person. Yeah. And so, you know, other, you know, you can share your login information with other people. Yeah. yeah. But the accountability is under one name. Yeah. So. But there's no name attached. It's a title, not a name. Well, no, no, there's a name. Like that last year's director had an account in her name. You could email that name. First name, dot last name, like anybody else. Oh, 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 but okay. then, much like everybody else, that person also got an alias address, mm -hmm. so that you could email rec director, mm -hmm. and and it would automatically filter to that name address. Yeah, this is mainly for the ones that are applying, you know, or asking questions about it, but mm -hmm. haven't signed up for a rec yet, and so she really yeah, didn't want weird. to have her personal email put out there. Because um, she's doing the replying back, so because yeah, um, so, actually mostly the chairs are doing that right now because we don't have the rec director or sure, because we don't have one yet. So, so okay, um, so you and I can work that out. But okay. what exists? So we just okay. need to talk about the logistics of what name is it going to be under, okay. and what's the rec what's the alias is going to be, and who's going to have access, and making sure everybody understand understands how it works because it gets one name. If somebody else has a login for that, um, that's not really great for accountability reasons because the one person is going to own it. Yep. You know, yep. it, it's kind of a gray area, but it, it does add functionality. So. Okay. All right. So other than that, um, it's going really well. Um, our numbers are higher than they were last year at this time, so that's good. Um, so we're just putting along and hoping that they will trying to work out the schedules and um, what we have to pay out from, you know, to get um, our tickets. You know, some, uh, I remember she, uh, we talked about Kennedy Lake, um, and we remembered that that one in particular we bought at the gate because you had a coupon. So it, it um, went on, um, I think it's somebody's personal um, right, So right, that right. may still have to happen if you want to get, take advantage of the coupon. It was like a $5 coupon, or it was, a, it was worth doing it that way. Uh, but as long as people, right? well, yeah, yeah. Right. So um, we may have to still reimburse if someone's willing to do that. So that's nice. Okay. But yep, so the, things are going well. Do you have good candidates for your other positions? Is that going well? Yeah, um, Kelly's really um, very encouraged about the director, but we didn't have it at right, the last right, meeting. Right. Um, so she's really she's really feeling good about it. Um, yeah. Counselors, um, yep. Yeah, um, I mean, this, I think they're going to have to put it out there a little bit again because it's more. I mean, we have more counselors than we have. Um, so, but yeah. No, it's good. Uh, so. 
Anything? Do you want me to talk about that? If you feel you need to. I don't. Okay. Thank you. Any other um, updates for recreation? Mm -hmm. No, I think it's all going. Stay uh, tuned. Stormwater. Stormwater. We met last week. Um, got through a lot of different uh, things the town needs to do for year one. Been writing a lot. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we did appoint a chair of the Stormwater Committee. Um, Who's the chair? Mr. Kazal agreed oh. to be the chair after some mm. investment. <laughs> yes. We thank him um, for his service. Yes. Um, but thing, things are moving along. Um, I do believe we're going to meet more frequently because there's a lot we need to start doing before there's a report that needs to go out by September, September 30th. 30th. And we ended the oh, we're on we top. fully through the agenda because it was getting really long and late. Wow. Um, but something's going on in the newsletter, which is going good. to meet one of our compulsory good. outreach good. items. Good. Good. Um, well, we're staying on top of that long list of uh, it's a really good group and, yeah, and um, Thank you. with a really good leader, so it's um, That's great. relatively under control. Paul is coming in at 9 tomorrow um, to talk over some things. You're welcome to join us if you want. Um, there is discussion about um, an IDDE ordinance, which Paul's insisting that we need. Um, Illicit discharge, um, elimination, and um, detection and elimination. You break my mind. Um, Can I ask you what I do? Um, so the question is whether or not it really ought to be adopted whole, or should it be broken up and put into planning documents? And if it's adopted whole, which sounds like the simpler thing to do, what does the board have the authority to do that, or does it have to go to town meeting? Town meeting, I would assume. So um, we're trying to work. We don't have town meeting. Well, well, we, we do. We do. You mean like ballot? Ballot. Or it's still it or something. Right. Yeah, it still does. Yeah. So, um, we're going to get quotes to get um, to see if Strava Regional Planning or the state or someone can help review our planning documents so that, aside from the IDDE ordinance, that our planning regulations say what they need to say about implementation and oversight over construction projects with regard to stormwater regulations, because we're going to have to get that far. The Strapper Regional is going to take a look at this, I saw an email. They are going to provide a quote. To right, take a yeah, look that's at right. Yes, so we'll see about that. You know, stormwater is a $5,000 budget. Um, I, you know, we have a lot of things to think about within that budget. Sure. Um, also, we are going to um, talk to um, John Jackman from Hoyle Tanner um, about a revolving fund grant program for asset management because it's something that we're going to have to do anyway. We okay. potentially get a grant for um, okay. a new wave of funding just opened up. Um, it's going to present potentially a budgetary problem because it's a twenty or thirty thousand dollar grant that nobody budgeted for. Right. So there's that. So you know. We're just in the beginning stages of talking about that, but it's it's nice to know that there's help out there, and we're marching in a direction. Wow. Okay then. Stay tuned. Okay. Anything else for stormwater? Nope. Budget committee. Budget committee. Um, I've been asked to um, ask if there is funds that they can have the in-house training done by the municipal association again. We have some new members that have. Um, Joined uh, actually with four new members, um, two that were elected and then two that were appointed. Right? Yeah. Only one of them. Yeah. So um, we are very interested in um, doing the uh, in-house training. Right. And last time we offered it to the other departments, and because everyone should learn how to budget, as in for their own departments and stuff too. So uh, it's five hundred and fifty dollars. It could be very informative and helpful to um, yeah. new employees, mm -hmm. um, department heads. What um, um, training? training? Um, what are we training for? Not enough. It's a thousand dollars for essentially for the town, except which does not include the police department. But a thousand dollars for everybody else. You know, we should have it in there going forward. 
now for the, for the budget committee as a, as a line item in the budget each year. Um, training for the budget committee and planning for it. Yeah, yeah. But we should we should um, think about doing it or you know. But um, they've uh, appointed uh, Angela Matthews and um, Peter Van Pieces, um to be so now that we have a complete committee. There you go. All right. Yep. Thank them for stepping forward. Mm -hmm. And we thank the folks that um, served previously. All right, so we have $1,000 on that? So I think it's 1100 Oh, it may be. So, hang on. I think we need to do it. I think it's, I think it's worth, I, and I'll take it again. I just think that you learn something every time you take it, so. I think it's really helpful to be able to ask questions. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, they did a great job the last year, so I'd like to see it happen. It can only help them to be better budget committee members, so. I'm sure we can find it another contingency or another line, so. Okay, so shall I reach out to them and get a couple of upcoming Wednesdays? Um, yeah. And make yeah. sure this still is going to be 500. Yeah, and five, and confirm, well, the, 50, 50, 50, 50. confirm the pricing and and then um, I would run the um, the dates available to, to John. Yes. Okay, I told him yeah. I'd bring it up, but I'm going to him on that, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Closed up one of our uh, oh, that's the fifteenth, so that's fine. Why don't I just move my agenda? <laughs> Close my agenda. Town administrator. Town administrator. Town administrator's update. update. Great. Uh, maybe I'll find my agenda while you're. Is that it? Oh. You know, that's another week. So I don't know. Okay. So while you're looking for it, um, I don't have a lot to report on, on top of what all was just discussed, except to say I sent you all the first quarter financials. Mm -hmm. So um, there's kind of a lot to digest there. If you would have a look. And um, I've also sent it along to department heads. Okay. Um, they may ask for adjustments between lines if they felt as though I... Did it get fixed? I mean, is it a proper one or is it still on uh, the I sent you a properly formatted no, my one. Idea, the, one of them was all funky. Had all sorts of letters. Well, you, it, you said it didn't tie out either. So did it, is it tying out now? You had, a, you had a problem when you were doing it last week. Yes. Is that fixed? Um, no. Okay. Yet you have a good report. Okay. Um, and that's because um, I manually entered, I wasn't able to take an Excel spreadsheet and import data into another Excel spreadsheet, which is the ultimate goal. Okay. Um, I'm still having that problem, but I manually included the data so okay. that you all would have a report to look at and for the department heads and ultimately for the budget committee. Okay. So um, you and I should sit down and... Yep. When is it? It's, it's um, I, I, not week, this it's, Wednesday, it's another... Yeah. Right, okay. it's next um, week on Wednesday. Yeah, we'll, so we'll we can talk, talk about we can it. Talk, yeah. All right. So, Anything else? Um, just a reminder that we have both here still. Mm -hmm. I'm in for your update. But no, yeah. no. I've got my agenda. I found it. All right. I left it on the page. No, I, I was just looking at it. All right. How about we do a correspondence? What do we got? We got some things that are sold right now. We need to sign. Yes. I'll just do it. There's a part of it. So we have the professional work agreement with Pike to get their. Uh, you all voted last week to go along with the contract. I support that. With Pike to do the work, right? So this is the long form contract that I was speaking about, updated to reflect this year's information. Right. So it's it's the, the bottom line that you both voted on last week for the contract with Pike. It just lays out. And the first paragraph. The purpose, the scope of service, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a long form contract you're going to take a look at. It. Mm -hmm. yeah. it requires them to provide bond. All that good stuff. You wrote it on the bottom line last week, right? Yeah. The well, and they one. signed the um, the pipe the pipe bid Sheet. sheets oh, yeah. that are attached. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then, then, then this has already been voted on, so we'll sign. Uh, then we have a letter to um, 
375 Rollins Road. Um, uh, there's some renovation to construction going on apparently uh, without a building permit. So, unless there's objection, I will sign this and we can send it off. Okay. That's resolved. Okay, that is the annual transfer station facility report, which is um, a report of how much of the different categories of waste we went through the transfer station, how much came in and how much went out and how much was there at the end of the year. And Ed filled it in for us? So Ed filled it out. Um, he's reviewed it. It's based on our billing data and our income sheets from various vendors. Yeah, um, so it's, it's, I have to say, um, I'm very pleased with um, how he's managing paperwork and yeah. able to fill out this report much better than ever before. Ever before. This is great. Yeah. Not to mention it's off my plate, which is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 by the way, I'm take a look at it. Um, I'm just having a look it's also in your email, so you can read oh, okay. it. Oh, okay. If it's in my email, I don't need it. Take up time. All right. And I have no. Uh, is there any objection? If not, I'm going to sign this on behalf of the town. This is the first time I think uh, we have signed well, this without fine. having a lengthy conversation because we've had to question whether or not the information is correct. But I don't think I have any doubts actually. Please thank Ed if you see him tomorrow. This is uh, very thorough. It is really complicated and thorough, and um, it requires conversions from items each into tons and all mm -hmm. kinds of horrible things like that. You did a nice job. And the last thing I have in here is a request for disbursement to repay York Ambulance their uh, annual fee for services. You pay it all at once? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might want to open this. <laughs> fix that, <laughs> fix that form. That. Yeah, we, we have uh, two headers. Um, anyway, so any objections uh, authorizing the disbursement? No. All right. What do you got in your magic folder over there, Mark? Let's see. Purchase order 1524 to Janato's Landscaping for $1,000 for the cemetery cleanup. Make a motion. I'll stop. Oh, I'm sorry. What's it's okay. Not a problem. I was um, daydreaming. <laughs> Nightdreaming. <laughs> Not day anymore. All right. So they've changed. Also. They've changed. Firms. They've changed their firms. So firms. They have. So they used to be with Green Shadow. I believe. Yeah. Right. This seems a lot less than uh, mm -hmm. than what we we're paying before. Yeah. It's, it's a local person. So it yeah. is indeed. Yeah. I saw them out there doing. Yes, yeah, they did. They do do a nice job. I saw them out there working the other day when I drove by. So anyways. Okay, so purchase order 1524 has been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Next up we have... How much was it? One thousand dollars. Sorry, I thought we had said that. Sorry. Um, going to have an application for uh, current use. Okay. That Chad has reviewed okay. and advised it meets criteria for current current use. Perfect. Um, 140 Heritage Drive in Rollins, New Hampshire. It's Bathland. I was going to say. Okay. It's Bathland. It must be. He's adding a three. What is it? 140? You said it must yeah. be way in the back. Like way in the back corner before it becomes a motor car. It's also off the end of Power Road. Yeah. So that makes sense to me. That's the that's the place I would think it would go all the way back there. <laughs> And it's exactly the name I thought it you was, actually. No, it was still his, though. I thought it was uh, his children's one. Whatever. It must be his. It's in his name. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. It's been reviewed by Chad. Yes. All right. So we all we don't need to vote because we all have to sign it. Or well, at least two of us have to sign it. Use black ink. Well, sorry, this is a blue. Dean says black. Too late now. The die is cast. It's been cast in blue. Black. And you put both side in black, it'll be official. All right. All right. <laughs> um, so while Denise is doing that, um, there is um, a 
form here for Monarch, Monarch Data Distribution Services Agreement between the town and Fiddler Technologies so, to access the Registry of Deeds? Yes, so um, the Registry of Deeds is changing its software program for accessing and also the program for downloading and printing deeds yeah, sure. for when we need to do that. Sure. So, um, this, is not, this does not have a cost to the town except for um, Tom Lavelle's time to install the software. So. Um, that I'm not clear on. It might go on, I, I'm sure it goes on hers. It might also go on the assessing computer, okay. I would think. Yeah. But we need this access, obviously. To right, to access. To to maintain, to access so, so, so any um, objection to me signing off on this on behalf of the town? Uh, no objection. No. All right. they wanted a four bedroom house so they needed uh, a new Table. design. Gotcha. Um, so we can need the stamp. The stamp. So they revised their plan and been the reviewed. Plan. And more money. Mm -hmm. Did you stamp it? Oh, so Anywhere places. where it's blank. Um, <laughs> on this? On that. Oh, on that. Okay. It actually has a little square, but yeah. Safe, I would stamp the plan too, just in case. Yes, please do. Also, you that? Yes, thank you. What do you think? You've stamped it too many times? In too many places? Again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then safe this here, right here? Yeah, and there's only one copy there. I think so. Yeah, as well. Yeah, as okay. And do I have to sign it? Oops. Yeah. And initial. I mean, sign Sorry, initial. Data, rather. Just so sign in David right for me to sign. Okay. On this too? Just to be safe. So we didn't do it one time because you don't really need to, you only have to do it on that sheet. I think I sent back to it. You don't okay. send it in the plan. There you go. State changed what they want now. Okay. So that's is that it? Nothing else on the folders? No input. Let's see. I have a question, or more than one question, but um, it was asked of me, does the town have any requirements to notify the board if we're going to have a raffle or yes. anything like that? What so approval not, do we so need to get? It's not a town ordinance, it's state law, I think. I think you need police. Um, there's a police form. Gambling license. There's a form that you have to fill up. You would get that from the police department. Okay. For a raffle? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You can you can hold a um, you can't um, you can't you can't have a raffle, you can have what do they call it? No, like a drawing or a you can call something else, I don't think you have to. But yes, you do. You have to have permission. And I don't think it's difficult to come by, but just have to have the form and signed off. So they know it's legit. The PTO was trying to put on a calendar raffle. Yeah. And when you, or a raffle in general, when you need to confirm yep. the legality of that. Yeah. On a similar but side note, um, I'm in the process of doing grants that are going through the rec committee and then would like to know what the next step will be once the rec committee approves them. Does the ex officio take care of that? Or it is comes the to the full board? So we have to sign off on it. The board has to sign off on any grants because it figured the liabilities on behalf of the town. So that's what we did in the past, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you got to bring it on over. I just want to get clarification that yep. it means that you guys can. Yeah, because we're on the, as the, we're board, on the hook for everything. So As the board changes, policies change. So. Yeah. 
Well, that one should be consistent. It's always been the absolute length of the time left by the, by the select board. Because we already have the uh, fiduciary responsibility for all that. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I have just a couple of questions? Sure. Um, I think that the a little bit of a gray area. We're asking for equipment and okay. not finances. Okay. Would, you, would you still like to see that? There's a grant, yes. Okay. We have to, just in case. And then. And if you can get it to them Friday. You know, on a Friday so that they have the weekend, you know, or sometime in advance so that they could possibly read it prior to Monday night, that's helpful. Thank you. That's That'd be very helpful. Those are my questions and concerns. Thank you. All right. Any other community input? Seeing none, I need a motion to go into non public session to deal with a welfare issue. I make a motion to go into non public to deal with a welfare issue. Second. Moved and second. And roll call. Denise? Yes. Miles? Yes. Mike? Yes. We are now.